in so many ways. It's all that I've known. This has been my home. Chaotic environments. I've been going through violence, still screaming in silence. All I wanted was shelter, warm bed, a pot to piss in, and daydream of a better living. I hate living in this nightmare. I was born inside a wind parade, crying on the best days, almost pushed out on the tape inside an escalate. In those last moments, spilling out into the interstate. Estimate the loss of the universe, don't escalate. Back to the soil, back to the flower beds, back to the crown royal, then it's back to the toil black. Spinning while these other motherfuckers are still in raps, ready to die, ready to fly while I skip the track. Right on, get up. Kellair will have completely destroyed a mom and pop company that has been flying families over Lake Michigan for 30 years. This isn't equitable or fair. This isn't about equity, Your Honor. Well, I noticed you left out the word fair. Well, in this case, the law clearly uh, states. You have already cited the case. I'm sorry, Mr. Kelsey, but uh, the court has no choice but to follow the law. I see you more than I see my grandchildren, and that is a problem. This time, it's uh, two Oxycontin pills that you gave to your, your fellow inmate. Yeah, my boy was hurt when he had the shakes. Mr. Randolph, you have three weeks remaining on your present sentence. I'm going to tack on an additional week. Man, some fucking bullshit. Mr. Randolph, Mr. Randolph, you're on your way out. You stay out of trouble. Mr. Randolph, remember to return. Turn here back to the podium. We have another case in here in this court, a civil case that's due up for trial in two weeks, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This case has been bounced around this court for, what, six years now? Your Honor, I'm sorry, I'm Jamal's mother. We've tried, but we haven't been able to find anyone to help us. Uh, Mr. Randolph? Do you wish to proceed? Yeah. Well, representing yourself is not a good idea. Mr. Trainer, please return to the podium, please. Uh, please. Well, 
comes to train him. You have an impressive record here. In uh, from the looks of it, you've managed to turn down every case in which any court has attempted to appoint you to represent an indigent client. Uh, your Honor, if I may. Uh, 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 did I ask you to speak, Counsel? Hmm? Then no. You may not. Uh, and of course, to the docket, you have never handled a pro bono case for this court or any court. I make donations. I, I write a lot of checks for charities. Accepting appointments to represent a client who cannot afford a lawyer is a responsibility that you owe to the bar. And I have a responsibility to my corporate clients and my firm. Mr. Randolph, meet your new lawyer, Michael Trainer. Oh, hell. <laughs> your Honor, my practice is confined to corporate litigation, not... Unconfined. Next case. Kanan versus Molesky. this case we're not you're gonna find a conflict can't we just assign someone from the firm to the case they have legal aid for people like him people like him don't do that you know what i mean Six glasses shatter, champagne goes, goes oh. everywhere. No. So before we raise a glass, I want to say, Belcor will be the first private foster company to go public ever. That's, what are the stock projections? 300% increase in year one, plus or minus 20%. Okay, I'll take that. Plus or minus. <laughs> Mr. Pre, where are we out the collateral litigation? Uh, ten lawsuits in total. Six should be dismissed by the end of the month. Three we can settle for under 50. Six and three. That's nine. Yes, there's a kid in Chicago. Just gonna sign a lawyer. Corporate guy. Shouldn't be a problem. Oh, I see. Yeah. Let's make sure that it's not a problem. Yes. Okay, good enough. Now come in gently. You don't want to make it. Yes. My key still works. It might be better if you'd knock. Of course. Where's Benny? He, he's packing his bag. Hey, Benny? Yeah? Your dad's here. Okay. You don't, don't, you don't have to do that. go to Chicago. Are you two arguing again? No. How you doing, buddy? I'm fine. Hey, show your dad your picture. Oh. Well, that's terrific. It's you. He, he drew a picture of you. Yeah, yeah. I tried to get out of it, but the judge forced me to take a pro bono case. What's pro bono? Pro bono. Well, that's where the judge forces you to do something for free. How come? You got me. When somebody can't afford a lawyer, the judge tries to be helpful and appoints an attorney. What happened to him? He got hurt, and he wants money from the people he thinks are responsible. Will they give it to him? Maybe a little. Did they only hurt him a little? Uh, the company doesn't think that they hurt him at all. What do you think? Love you, too. We'll settle this by noon and be out of here. All right. I didn't think this kid's going to present like a thug. The yeah, first not going to help. Mr. Trainer, I'm so glad to finally meet you. I'm, I'm Shana, excuse me, I'm Shana Randolph, Jamal's mother. My husband and I Googled you. Your reputation is impeccable. Well, Miss Randolph, you can't believe everything you read on Google. 
A liberal invented it. Excuse me. Could you remove his cuffs, please? Protocol. James Randolph? Jamal. Jamal Randolph, okay. Today we're going to have a pretrial. Do you know what that is? That's where we try to settle this case and get some money in your pocket. You'd like that, wouldn't you? Some bullshit. The defendant, Belcourt Family Services, has offered you $40,000. I'd like to get that up to, say, 70, 75. That sound good? Nope. All right. Well, maybe 80. It ain't about the money. Three piece. It's always about the money. And three piece suits went out in the 80s. Are you deaf, old man? Maybe 90. Why the fuck do I have to have you as my lawyer? You're a real charmer, you know that? Judge Taylor will see you both in chambers. You work on him. You know, you should count yourself lucky to be represented by Mr. Trainer. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. Now, how much does he pay you to kiss that ass? trainer samuel collins judge we have told the plaintiff we'll pay forty thousand if he'll take it my client's digging his heels in but i'm still working on it so what's your demand offer a hundred let's see what we can do i may be able to do 75. Uh, mr collins do you mind if i have a moment with mr trainer please demand by your client before you were appointed uh, was uh, $20 million, $100,000. That seems a little uh, little shy in comparison, would you say so? <laughs> $20 million. Uh -huh. It's totally unrealistic. Did he have allegations that when uh, Jamal Randolph was a 10-year-old child, Belcourt negligently ignored his repeated complaints when a 16-year-old was also in place, brutally raped and tortured him for three year period. Yes, mm -hmm. I've read the case. Mm -hmm. They're allegations, as you say. Well, Belcourt, it's a, a private corporation that buys contracts from the states for foster care, right? It's a business, a big business. There's nothing illegal about that. Is Belcourt your, your client? Excuse me? Oh, you seem to know more about them than you know about uh, Jamal. Your Honor, this is a respected corporation versus a kid that looks like a thug. Thug. What does the thug look like to you? It doesn't matter what I think. It's what the jury sees. It's the whole package, the attitude, the hair. Hair? Why are you selling out your clients? We sell out nobody. Who do you think you are? Sit down. I'm gonna have you disbarred. Fine. I could retire tomorrow. Come. So maybe you can get that money that you did protecting those corporations. Then you can retire to your private golf club. And then you can stand over your putter, trying to get the perfect putt, knowing God that well that you haven't done anything for anybody but yourself. Get out of my chambers. I'm sure you have someplace else to go, Mr. Trainer. No settlement. No 
Okay. The trial starts Monday morning at 9 a.m. Start picking the jury. Monday. I can't. That doesn't give me time to prepare. That's what the last two weeks were about. Monday. Mr. Trainer. Your Honor, I need to clean my client up. I need to get him a haircut. A judge's case is not a bob. I can't put my client in front of a jury looking like this. Side room in there, if you like. and give me an outline of my cross exams by tomorrow morning. We got nothing, you know? This is a joke. No. We've got a young man with no money who won't accept an $80,000 settlement. That's something. or two of 
wine is more productive than hours in a courtroom. Good point. Thank you. No, we're not so different, you and I. I worked my way up through the company. Started as a caseworker, then manager. Now I'm vice president of claims and a major shareholder. Because of who you are and the type of clients you have, I think we can get this up to 100,000. The kid won't settle. Bell Corps took over where the government failed, Mr. Trainer. The state had over 20,000 kids in child services. Now we do it all. Pretty soon, Bell Corps Family Services will be in all 50 states. Private companies do it better. Yeah. Private companies do some things better. They make a good fork, a good knife, a nice glass of red wine. The trouble is, a child is not a product. <laughs> you joining the Green Party? <laughs> I'm sure you'd know if I was. The jury's not going to believe a black drug dealer. A couple pills, I'll keep it out. Won't keep out the color of her skin. The kid is a mess. The kid was a mess before Belcourt got a hold of him. The kid was four years old before Belcourt got a hold of him. Where were the parents? Maybe Belcourt never told the Randolphs about Joy Poulet's violent history. I'm authorized to go to 150000 that's it. Wow. You just went to $150,000, and I haven't had a sip of that red wine. This is a nuisance case, Mr. Trainer. Just like the dozen or so you and I have handled over the years. Take the offer to your client. Then you can go back home to your son, Benjamin. That it? Jury selection. Are you ready to proceed? Your Honor, may I have a minute? I'll let you have five. Then I'm calling the jury. Thank you. Bill Cour up the offer to 150000 I already said no. I have a fiduciary responsibility to tell you that that's a lot of money. Did they ever put a criminal in another home like they do with us? There have been other allegations. I need to talk to you outside. Sure. What are you seeing there, Mr. Trainer? Do you see a young man who has lost three years of his life? Do you see a shame? Or is all you can see is another opportunity to be done with this case? Miss Randolph, with all due respect... You're a father, aren't you? I'm telling you now, we are not going to settle. Shine a light on what they did. Fight for that child as if he were your own. Jamal was eight pretty difficult those first few months. Never heard so many curse words. Bill, we're here. I thought they were coming tomorrow. It doesn't look that way. Just put that stuff on. Mr. and Mrs. Randolph. Mr. Pree, we spoke on the phone. How are you? Hi. Hi. Hello there, James. It's Jamal. Jamal, then. Did Jamal ever talk about his past? It was off limits. Pamela Dupree 
placed Joy Poulet in your home. Is that correct? Yes. Did she ever talk to you about Joy's past? Uh, any violent tendencies? Objection, Your Honor. We have never established that either Belcour or Ms. Dupree would have had access to that information. Assisting. How long after Joy moved into your home did you begin to see a difference in Jamal's behavior? I should have seen it right away, but I didn't.
One of your first foster homes was with Stephanie Myers. Tell us what happened. stayed with them before the Randolphs. Don't you remember? You lived with them. You'll get two of these a month. This is for you? This is for you. You look at Question. What? What? What, man? What do you remember about the Ryans? <clears throat> nothing. Jesus Christ. Excuse me, counselor. You said nothing. Let's move on to the next line of questions. Your Honor, may I have a quick word with my client? Nicole, we'll take a five minute recess. You asked. Why do you have to have me as your lawyer? Why do I have to have you as my client? Do you ever think of that? Hmm? No. Because you're too busy thinking the world owes you something. I'm the bad guy, right? I ask you to settle, I'm a sellout. I wear nice clothes and I'm a fucking three-piece. You don't know shit about me. So let me tell you a little bit about myself. I know how to practice law. That's what I know. I know how to win cases. So if you want to win, you've got to go out there and you've got to tell those 12 people getting paid $15 a day your story. If you don't want to win, then don't talk. I'm trying. Good. Because your five minutes are up. Tell us what happened, Jamal. Why did you file this lawsuit? Jamal, why did you file this lawsuit? Answer the question, Mr. Randolph. Tell us what happened. Why did you file this lawsuit? What are we even doing here? Yeah. Tell us what happened. Leave me the fuck alone! All of you! You don't get it, man! What up? You fucking listen, what man! Up? You don't want fucking get it, right? So what fucking up? fuck this shit! What up? Get fuck it. I'm out of here. This is some bullshit. Sir, I'll get the fuck out of my way. No, I'm not getting back on this thing. Get the fuck out of my way. 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 Get the fuck out of my way.
Michael, can I talk to you? Tell Jeff he'll fill me in. No, sir, I need to talk to you. I think you should stop talking at Jamal and try listening to him. Have you been paying attention at all? That's all I do is listen. You want to help me? Tell him to start talking or we're going to lose this case. Jamal left these behind. I think it'd be good for you to take a look. Just a droplet on the pain. You drown me with your pills and medications. Cause I identify as what the state. Cage. 
in so many ways. It's all that I've known. Cell's been my home. Chaotic environments. I've been growing violence. Still screwed. It's not stupid. Yeah. I, actually, I got him right here. Michael, I got Reynolds. He's looking at your notes on the German case. You got a second? Tell him we're busy with this case. He's on his own. Uh, I'm going to have to get back to you. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. It's dead. Hi. Hi. Benny gets his leg braces off today, right? Could I speak to him? Sure. Hello? Hey, how you feeling? Good. H how's the case going? Did you win? Well, not yet. It's a tough one. Don't you always win? Not always, no. Well, you should win this one. Well, I'm gonna do my best. Here's Mom. Listen, Kim, you think I could have Ben for the Thanksgiving weekend? In Chicago? Yeah, you put him on the plane, I'll pick him up on the other end. It'll be nice, the two of us can hang out. I don't know. Well, will you think about it? It's fine. I'm I'm wide awake. Okay, I'm very sorry to bother you, sir, but a man left you an urgent package. Did you see who left it? No, sir. Thanks, Sanjay. document showing that Joey Poulet had a history of violence. He molested his own sister and his niece. God knows how many other children. Jesus. I need you to find out who dropped those off. Okay. And Keisha. Thank you. I, uh, I apologize for not being more properly dressed. It's okay, Mr. Trainer.
I am very busy. Did you work with Payment Lidipree? Uh, I, I have an appointment. Uh, I am late. Mr. Cohen! Did you work with Pamela Dupree? telling the truth oh wow that's something different for you huh yeah it's something so i i talked to benny about thanksgiving he said yes and i want him to go see you i think it'll be good for both of you that's great tell him i can't wait to see him we'll go ride horses in the park horses why well, don't worry they're old nags they don't go very fast okay just be careful michael he just got those braces off of course yeah trainer calling. I just received some very alarming news. Could you please call me back? Hey! Hey, Dupree! You're behind us, aren't you? What did you say to Keller? Keller makes its own decisions, Mr. Trainer. And they decided not to work with you anymore. You're a real piece of shit, you know that? Be careful, Mr. Trainer. Keller was just the beginning. Give me the bill cord file. Sir, the files what are bill cord file? file? Your Honor, I'd like to recall Jamal Randolph to the stand. Let me proceed. Jamal, I need you to go back on the stand. All you have to do is say yes. I'll do the rest. Michael, what are you doing? Jamal, you were tortured in the Ryan home. And their own file shows that. Isn't that true? What file? Objection, Your, Your Honor. Own file shows that they placed Joy Poulet in the Randolph side, home of his previous sexual assault. Calza. Judge, I have several case notes to show that Belcour knew that Joy Poulet had sexually assaulted other children. I have never seen these documents. Can I see that? Someone dropped them off at my hotel. Judge, this is what discovery is for. Without any any foundation, how, how do we establish the authenticity of these documents? How do we know Mr. Trainer didn't create these documents himself? That's bullshit. That's enough. He has no witness to lay a foundation. How do you know? I'm making a really good guess. 
to me. No, not yet. You can be damn sure, unless you can find a person who can authenticate this document. It's not going in. Mr. Dupree, if you were Jamal Randolph and Joy Poulet's caseworker for four years, and you're telling the jury that you had no knowledge that Joy Poulet sexually assaulted Jamal Randolph. Objection, Your Honor. Sustained. Counsel, you've asked the same question three straight times. Move on. Apparently, putting your hand on the Bible and taking the oath means nothing. What is that you said, Counselor? Nothing, Your Honor. I'd like to show you what's been marked as exhibit number 23. Objection, Your Honor! If this document is not already familiar to the witness, then there is no foundation for its introduction. Take it down. I'm showing you a copy of a mental health record that shows that Joy Poulet raped his own sister and cousin. Objection, Your Honor. Sustained. Counsel, I should show that document to Mr. Prey and see if she recognizes it first. You recognize that document? Never saw it before, Counselor. The jury is instructed to disregard it. Move on. Mr. Dupree, did you know Joey Poulet raped his sister? No, I did not. Did you know that he raped his cousin? I never knew. Did you know that he beat and raped Jamal Randall? Never knew any of it, Counselor. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for a Thanksgiving break. And the jury is instructed not to discuss this case or to read about it. To rise. She's lying. I know she is. We should take their last offer. Why would we do that? We can't introduce a damn thing. I know that they settled this right now. No. Playing the game. There's your answer. I'm uh, I'm gonna grab a flight out. What? It's uh it's Thanksgiving weekend. Right, but you'll be back Saturday. You're not coming back, are you? When Michael found out about Kellyer, you weren't surprised. I'm leaving. Starting my own flight. With no clients. Keller's going with him. Is that true? Ten years and this is what it comes to? You had your day, Michael. You're making a fool of yourself in that courtroom. Isn't that obvious? Dupree got to you, didn't she? That's what they do, Jeff. No loyalty. People like Dupree go to Cal Air and make deals, and people like you accept them. For 10 years, I watched you get rich off of companies like Belcor, destroying anyone who got in your way. And now, all of a sudden, you have a change of heart? You think defending that kid makes you some kind of savior? You should have settled. Happy Thanksgiving. left a couple messages I haven't heard back. I still don't have Benny's flight information. Can you please call me? Mr. Trainer, I've just received an urgent message from your wife. That's weird, Ray. Why wouldn't she have called my cell? She said that she couldn't get through to your mobile phone. She wanted me to let you know that your son's changed his mind. He won't make it for Thanksgiving.
Sorry, sir. Thanks. Somebody almost ran me over. Get in. Unlock the door. You think it was Belcor? Could have been an accident. I think it was a warning. to you. I know you're the one that dropped those documents off at my hotel. I need you to testify. You have no idea what these people are capable of. Do you remember Jamal? Hey, Miss Grom. I want you to look at this young man's face and tell him that you're not going to help him. I never wanted you to get hurt. I never wanted any of them to get hurt. But we did. The more placements that fail, the more money the Belcor makes. Okay? Wait, how do they fail? Let's say that the government pays 3,000 bucks per foster care placement. But it doesn't work out. So then Belcor places the kid again, and they make another 3,000 bucks. 
<laughs> the whole system is designed to fail. Mr. Cohen, I need you to tell this to the jury. I can't. Mr. Cohen! <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> you know, sometimes this shit is so thick that the only thing you can do is laugh, Mr. Turner. It's not funny. We're gonna lose. No, we're not. It's okay. No, it's not okay. No, it is. You fought for me. And that means something. It's not okay. Is there something else on your mind? My son was supposed to fly in from Los Angeles today and he canceled, all right? It's really tough. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, it's my own fault. I haven't been the best father. How old is your son? Thanksgiving, and uh, Thanksgiving is a time for families to celebrate, and we damn sure are going to celebrate today. I will just 
destroy you and your fucking company if anything happens to my son. Do you understand me? Fuck what you think. 
Move back. I try and run you over again. They, uh... They took my son. Oh, shit, yeah, I... <laughs> He's fine. We were bringing a knife to a gunfight. It's time to even the odds. Straighten this shit out a little bit. How much you got in your wallet? What? Sit down. How much? I don't know. Maybe uh, a thousand more. I don't know. Jesus Christ. Boys. Give it to me. What are you going to do with it? Sometimes we gotta do things a little different in my world. And you're in my world now. I came here to bail you out. I don't want to get bailed out yet. I got work to do. So I should bail me out tomorrow. Mr. Trainer, you take care of your boy. Angeles. Give me 15 minutes like we talked about, all right? Disappear.
Yo. Hey. Thanks for bailing me out. Not a problem. You ready? That's uh, something I gotta do. What do you mean? We have court. I know. But it's important. Okay. What's going? <clears throat> hey, I'm not going anywhere, I. Right? has several notebooks. I'd like him to be able to use them to refresh his recollection. I object, Your Honor. They have never been produced in discovery. Your Honor, a witness can use notes to refresh recollections. Allow it. Thank you. Your Honor, there is one more thing. My client will need to wrap his testimony. I'm sorry, excuse me. Did you say wrap? Are you serious, Counselor? Uh, well, First Amendment, a right to testify. If the only way my client can tell his story is through rapping, then you cannot deny him. Uh, Your Honor, he has cited no case law or precedent. Your Honor, the Americans with Disabilities Act require a court to accommodate a witness if he or she has difficulty communicating. No such difficulty has ever been established in this case, Your Honor. In the case of United States versus Duran, the witness suffered from PTSD and had a comfort animal. A dog. Okay, okay. A notebook is not a dog, and this plaintiff is not disabled. Here are a line of cases where the court allowed for interpreters or even allowed a woman to speak while holding her child. This is absurd, Your Honor. And in the case of Michaels versus Donnelly, the court allowed a man afraid of crowds to face the wall while testifying. I'll allow it. Thank you. Don't overstep your bounds, Counselor. Are you ready? These motherfuckers are itching to tase me again, man. I know it. You'll be fine. The plaintiff recalls Jamal Randolph to the stand. Note my continuing objection. No continuing objection noted. Now continue to sit down. right, don't you? Yeah. Lyrics, poems, verses. All right, verses. Verses, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, verses about what happened to you, and you keep them in those notebooks. Is that correct? I'm going to ask you some questions. You don't have to look at anybody. You don't have to look at the jury. You don't have to look at me. Just tell us what happened. Okay? Going through revolving doors. 
of a foster care system. <laughs> no, Mama. Why, Mama? Now, you ain't my real Mama. You my high Mama. All I wanted was a hug and a high Mama. Take your fucking hands from my thigh, Mama. Flame of a lighter. Stephanie Myers. Cigarette and Guinness stout crack pipe hanging from her mouth spent all nighters. Watching talk shows all alone on the couch. Hide and seek ain't a game. If I'm screaming out. Cause if she take a hit. And I'm taking hits. I'm hoping she quits because I can't take this shit. You want a break? No. No, no break. I'm cool. Jamal, I'm going to ask you about the Ryan family. Can you tell us about the Ryans? Yeah. Yeah, I ain't never going to forget the Ryans. I'm afraid of what I turn into. Ain't what it's supposed to. You pissed the bed again. All I see are walls. No room at all. What are you playing me? Let go of me! So where do I go to? No one loves a bastard like the misery he's prone to. Better days. Drink it. Little care. Drink it! Misfortune always finds me there. No matter where, it's always near me. They only want me for a check, check. Can you hear me? Ryan watched. I peed the bed. He flipped the switch. Kicked my crotch. Ripped and beat me. Trick and treat me. That's who I had to call Pops. Pop goes the lid off the vinegar jar. Pop me in the jar, now I'm seeing stars. It's hard. I'm sorry, Jamal, but we need to talk about the Randolphs. Can you tell us what happened at the Randolph home? Started when I was dead. Did you ever tell anyone, Jamal? Her. Pamela Dupree. And what did she say to you when you told her, Jamal? <laughs> she said, I was lucky to have a home. Mr. Randolph, I was moved by the songs that you rapped to us during your direct testimony. But they were just that, am I right? 
songs. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Verses. To the truth. Okay. Okay. So you say. So is there anyone else in the courtroom here today who can verify your truth for us? Anyone at all? No one. Not Ms. Ryan. No other foster parents. Not even any kids from the neighborhood. There's nobody here to sing the same tune as you. Isn't that right? It's the truth. The truth. The songs that you wrote down in these notebooks. Yeah, I wrote the songs. Okay. Are the songs that you shared with us today the only songs that are inside the books? No. Well, what other kinds of songs have you written? Uh, I don't know, a lot of stuff. I mean, have you ever written any songs about, say, um, I don't know, places that you've never been? Or uh, romances you never actually had, sexual experiences you wish you had? No. No, nothing from your imagination? No. So, I want you to be careful here, Mr. Randolph. You're telling the court here today that if we look through these books which we can do which we will do that we will not find a single song that you made up that everything inside these notebooks there must be what uh uh a hundred or more and that every one of them is a true factual account of something that actually happened to you on well, some of the songs yeah but not not all of them fair enough some of them are real and some of them are made up but how can we know the difference? I'm, I'm telling you the difference. Oh, oh, I see. Okay. So there is actually no evidence whatsoever that any of these so-called rapes even happen, except for what you wrote down yourself inside these books that you've just admitted are also filled with things that you sometimes make up from your imagination. Thanks for clearing that up. Mr. Trainer, are you ready for closing arguments? Yes, Your Honor. If it may please the court, counsel, members of the jury, like to call Danielle Cohen to the stand, if I may. You gotta be kidding me. Come on up, Mr. Cohen. Your Honor, this witness appears on no witness list. We have no opportunity to prepare. Overruled. Step up, Mr. Cohen. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. State your name for the record. Daniel Cohen. Daniel Cohen. Can you tell the jury what you do for a living? Uh, social worker. How many years were you a social worker? Fifteen. Could you tell the jury what your relationship is to Miss Pamela Dupree? We work together at Belcourt Family Services. Mr. Cohen, I'm showing you what has been marked as exhibit number 23. Famous exhibit 23. Your Honor, I object. You give it up, Mr. Collins. Do you recognize this document? I do. Mr. Cohen, what exactly is this? It's a, a violent incident form. A violent incident form. And what does the violent incident form show? It shows that Joey Poulet raped his sister, put a knife up to another boy, and sexually assaulted another four-year-old child while at a residential treatment facility just six months before Pamela Dupree placed him with the Randolphs. Mr. Cohen, where is it that you found this document? I saw Miss Dupree throw it in the garbage and I took it out. That's true, isn't it, Miss Dupree? You threw it in the trash because you knew that Joy Poulet had a history of sexual violence. Isn't that true? 
Objection, Your Honor. Ms. Dupree is not on the witness stand. Is already under oath. It doesn't matter what chair she sits in. Answer the question, Ms. Dupree. Isn't it true that Belcor Family Services paid you bonuses? That you personally received money for each child you placed in a foster home? Isn't that true, Ms. Dupree? Jamal, I saw a thug, a freeloader, a tax on our system. Sometimes when we meet people, we don't see them for who they truly are. I'm sorry that I did not see you, Jamal. Over the course of this trial, I've gotten to know Jamal Randolph, the 19-year-old boy who sits before you today. And I ask you to go back in time now to see Jamal as a 10-year-old boy forced to live in 12 different foster homes. But eventually he found the right home, the home of Shana and Bill Randolph, who later adopted him. They also fostered Joey Poulet. Now what Jamal and the Randolphs didn't know, what they couldn't know, was that Joey Poulet had a severely violent past, a history of rape. The reason Jamal and the Randolphs didn't know was because Pamela Dupree and Belcourt Family Services tried to destroy those records. I'm sorry that Belcourt did this to you, Jamal. And I can see now why it's difficult for you to trust anyone. But I'm asking you to. I'm begging you. Please put your trust in this jury. The same way that your mother gave you hope by wrapping her loving arms around you, this jury will give you hope by wrapping the American Constitution around you. This is your opportunity to give Jamal and kids like him hope. Hope that what we do in this courtroom and courtrooms like this all across the country will never let them down again. flight back to Los Angeles. When was the last time I was in New Good point. Just want a couple of you, bud. Jury's back. Have you 
reached a verdict. We have, Your Honor. In the manner of Jamal Randolph versus Belcourt Family Services, we, the jury, find the defendants guilty of deliberate indifference to the rights of Jamal Randolph. And we assess damages of $32,650,000. this morning? I have some questions for you. No. Uh, I... Yeah. How much? see them for who they are. It's true. Thanks for everything. Three piece. Doug. Good luck, Mr. Randolph.
kick my crotch. Lift and beat me, trick and treat me. That's who I had to call Pop. Pop goes a lid off the vinegar jar. Pop me in the jar, now I'm seeing stars. A black thing, black thing. I'm a foster boy. Thank you. 